We all in the cyber security world, whether it is a startup, a business, an MSME, or you're a researcher, or you belong to any kind of work that deals with intellectual property, whether it is idea or it is innovation. It's significantly important to protect that. So the session is all about like how can we save our impetus? How can we safeguard our effort? So we all believe that innovation is you can be first or you can be the best. Either you are first or you are the best. You're putting significant efforts in carving that journey. Now how to protect that out? Let us start pondering with this eminent panel of distinguished speakers having expertise to contribute towards a significant topic of today. Among us, we do have Professor Janine Singh. We do have with us Kumar Tushar. From, uh, he's an attorney contributing towards a lot of significant counseling. We do have with us Mr. Govin, again an attorney, significant strategist towards IPR. And we do have Mr. Dilip from QNU Labs, and he is a significant person in a startup field who has themselves also carved out patents and can contribute towards this journey in a significant way. Now, over to your good self, give a brief introduction at your side, at your means, because you can justify that better, and then we will start it out. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak in this event. So, myself, Dr. Jagendra Singh, I'm Associate Professor Bennett University in the Computer Science Department. So if I talk about uh, IPR, intellectual property right, so uh, for example, we, we purchase some land somewhere, so where we need to register that, how we can claim that, excuse me. where excuse is me. my land, so we need to go to the registry of this, or uh, it is in the called Tehsil, almost in all districts, more than one, and for example, we want to uh, like marry someone, we need to go re register office again for getting the certificate and formalities or not. So what about the idea? Because it's idea is few lines, written lines. So where to register that? For example, I, I just planning to make some kind of uh, invention, some design invention, some kind of lines. So where to register? So in government, in IPR, in Indian government providing the facility to register that idea. So in that IPR, intellectual property right, so it has multiple types. First, Thank you, sir. My name is Tushar and I'm the founder of law firm JT Tony Alliance. Uh, primarily, I deal with the IP filings, IP prosecution, hearings, and litigation. So, hoping to have a very good session. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Gulit Kepo. I run an India-Europe-based uh, 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 IP consulting firm. Uh, we have been working with a uh, lot of software, uh, cybersecurity, and other uh, kind of companies and startups uh, helping with their uh, patents and trademarks uh, in India, U.S. and Europe. Hi everyone, uh, this is Dilip Singh, CTO from Kino Labs. Uh, Kino Labs actually is a company focusing on quantum security. So I'm happy to share uh, some comments. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. So to start with, the very first question that comes to everybody's mind is, like, what am I protecting ultimately? and whether it is significant to do that effort too, should I or not. So, so I would request, first of all, Mr. Govind, being uh, associated with IPR, patent, and the related nuances, please enumerate some of the things which you feel is significant for this process to commence on. If there's somebody who's starting this journey, who want to ponder more to know about this, and what all is there that you can contribute towards, please. I hope you're also carrying the presentation so if you feel like you can just click those things yes. out for yes. better connectivity of our audience as well. Thank you, Dr. Sajit. I will start with the presentation and also touch upon these topics. Sure, please go ahead. Uh, so so uh, while the presentation is starting, uh, can anybody guess how many patents might have been filed in last six, seven years around the world in the cyber security as a, as a whole? Just random guess, you know, some, some numbers. Just to keep you awake, I know it's a post line session, so I'll I'll try to keep make sure that you are awake and, and listening to me. Now, any numbers? Just some audience, just engaging, uh, just to understand. What is the number that you come in your head? How many patents must have been filed around the world in the cyber security as a very very broad domain? Computer science, cyber security, cyber security. Any any number? From India. From India. Generally, over. Around the world, first in the 
Pakistan India is also one. One million. One million. One million. Okay, very nice. Uh, very very uh, uh, very good number. Fifty thousand. Very good. It's like a bidding, but uh, let's start with that. Uh, any more numbers? Okay. So what what I yesterday you know found out that there were around uh, three three lakh fifty thousand you know cases in the last five to six years, which have been filed in general. Of course, uh, I am not going specific, but mostly which talks about you know, security, encryption, secure communication, network security, computer security, and so on and so forth. Right? This is the number that has been filed in the last uh, five, six years. Interestingly, 70% came from China. You know, this is the table, right? So, uh, almost dhai lakh, you know, uh, two and a half lakh, uh, number came from China, of course, then US and of course India. I think uh, somebody said 5,000, India is actually around 5 to 8,000, right? So, just to kind of, you know, set the context that people are filing in this domain, right? It's not that activities are not happening, right? So, I want to start from there, right? And then coming to India, uh, India has around 8,000, you know, in the last 5-6 years, right? Uh, there have been, uh, you know, a lot of significant uptick in terms of filings, right? I mean, uh, it's it's really great that, you know, DSA, I took this initiative to have this kind of session because in India, actually, it is actually a very, very increasing trend, right? So, it's a very relevant conversation in the cyber security domain. Uh, so, you know, if I look at, uh, I think, Hello. 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 Is it is it audible now? Okay. So in India, if you see, there are eight thousand inventions which were filed, you know, in the last five six years, and then, of course, you know, a lot of. So I tried to kind of look at, okay, who is filing in this? You know, some universities. What are the companies? But by and large, if you see, most of these global players who have the offices in India, right? They are originating and they're filing in India a lot. I mean, their their staff is actually coming up with a lot of ideas, you know, filing first in India and so on and so forth, right? So, it's very, very important to know that, uh, uh, that a lot is happening in this space, right? Of course. Uh, so, that is something I wanted to build upon first, right? And then, you know, why? You know, I think one of the bigger question is why you want to do filing, right? So, of course, uh, how to combat the copycats, right? Of, of course, if you build something, you want to make sure that there's nobody's copying it. Of course, attract the cyber, you know, savvy investors who, who are actually, you know, in this domain, finding a lot of patterns and you file something and then which is aligning with their old technology, right? So that's something you want to do. Partner with security giants, right? I mean, it's always like IP sharing if you have some strong IP around it. Boost the credibility, right? That's also marketing, that how you boost your credibility and also, if you are going in different markets, how you can secure your global, uh, you know, protection and around it, right? So I think that's something I wanted to touch upon. That why it is important. And the biggest myth a lot of people in this domain carry that software can't be patented, right? And I think I want to challenge that. That it's not true, right? First thing that you have to understand that it's it's totally possible to you know file software as long as it is technical in nature, right? So that's something you need to understand. Of course, talk to your important to know that it is patentable, right? <coughs> what are the inventions, kind of invention which gets into grant, right? So, of course, new security algorithms, innovative architectures, hardware-based uh, security solutions, security management, automation tools. These are like a broad spectrum where you can actually think about filing patents. There are lots of it, but I just wanted to touch upon which is relevant to the cyber security as a, as a big umbrella, right? So these are the larger buckets where you can think about your IP. Then what are the interesting trends which is happening in, in cyber security? Of course, uh, uh, Dilip sir will talk about the quantum computing and you know, they are doing a great work, but impact of quantum computing in the cyber security is going to be very, very you know, next big trend in this industry, right? And then uh, rise of AI, machine learning, you know, how you know, uh, innovations are actually countering it. That's also important. You know, how to have uh, privacy preserving technologies, right? So, new algorithms, new hardware level, a uh, lot of things are there. So, these are the IP trends which we all must look at. If you are developing something, you must think about securing some of the IPs. Of course, start with the why, right? 
and then of course you know convergence of physical and digital securities and so on and so forth. I think uh, this is my last slide, and then I'll pass on to other panel members. Yeah, I would uh, rather request you to be a bit more into the deeper while yes, we'll be yes, yes, touching yes, up yes. this slide because yes. I think this is the slide yes. of interest to many of us yes. who are sitting here. Yes. I think that's where I want to spend time and this probably Tushar will build upon uh, the process. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll go and deep. See, uh, the, the thing is this deep or much more deep starts with the basics. So let us have process, that base. Yeah. Definitely, we are touching. Yeah. Sure. See, the thing is this, uh, I would must appreciate your inquisitiveness at this point of time that you have raised all those questions that we are covering in this session, I must say. So your inquisitiveness is just going to be satisfied, but you have to be a bit patient. Things start, they just start running ahead then like anything, correct? We would do too. So yeah, please. No, I, I, what I wanted to first build is that most of the time I can tell you a real story with the startup, right? Uh, that they come with a pattern. Yes, we want to go in the forms, we want to get into the details, right? But unless there is a business, you will spend money on this, right? But also need to understand why we are doing this, right? That's why I wanted to spend some time to kind of tell a bigger picture, right? Of course, now we are going to do details. So of course, the first is to file, you know, your application. That's the first step. And before that, it is important to understand what you have invented, what technical problem that you solved in your product, right? Uh, is it something that you came up with an algorithm which is actually, you know, uh, making the uh, processing faster, able to trap something which is not being done before, right? So of course, first is to identify what is it that you have done unique in your product. Then you prepare your application, which we are calling at filing which is the first step towards any IP registration. Then it, it goes in the drafting and all those, you know, where we are trying to identify, okay, what is the invention? What is it that we are claiming, right? And then it's, it's filed with the patent office. Patent office examines on the three criteria, which is novelty, inventive step, and necessarily applicability. And based on that, you basically, uh, they will send you some uh, objection saying that, hey, you don't, to have complying with this because I found this, right? That is where you respond to them. That is why I say examination and then respond and iterate. It's basically like a negotiation with the trade payment office, right? And then the decision will be made, right? So statistically speaking, 60-40, 60%, they will accept 40% if you have not done good drafting or not written well of your patent application, they might reject as well. And then of course, once you get the granted payment, you will have to pay a regular fee to be able to maintain it. It's like an insurance policy. So this is the you know, high level process. I, I don't want to steal the thunder which Tushar has. Tushar has uh, you know, a lot of more detailed form and everything. But at this stage, what I wanted to you know, start with is that why it is important, what is the high level process, and then I'll uh, pass on to Tushar to go into more details. Any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Otherwise, I'll, I'll, I think I have 10 minutes, so I, I think I have done in my time. Yeah, okay. So I think Mr. Tushar is there along again uh, from the law fraternity with us to just ponder us more to the depth of this process. So Mr. Tushar, I would just like you to please take the audiences to the process also because some way or the other when a startup thinks, because here there are some who are already experienced with the process. They have done some journey, they have traversed some journey, they have carved some footprints or they are following someone's footprints. But there are many who are doing good job but yet thinking, okay, parent is a difficult thing, how to do it. So we are here to serve to not one, but to one and all. So more promisingly, we'll just look for this process to be taken a bit deeper, to Thank create you, that uh, kind of familiarity <coughs> to the process. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Govind. So, also. I'll be just like continuing from where Govind has left. Uh, but just one important point, like usually people uh, used to think like, I have this innovative idea, so patents can be filed. But at the same time, there are like multiple types of IPs. One needs to like articulate like which all IPs are very much functional with respect to my idea. I'll just take an example of like, uh, let's say, high phone. So if you see the half that Apple, the logo is very important to protect. If you see Google, so Google Cloud, Google Calendar, Google Gmail, 
all these are separately trademarked by that company. So whatever the products or the services you are about to launch or you have something in the future plan, please protect that logo as a work mark, as a device mark. That is going to be very beneficial in terms of trademark infringement. And in India also like correctly the trademark is a like a huge taking a momentum. If you talk about the legal case of Blinkit versus Blinkit, Flipkart case, lot many cases litigations are going around. So if there is a logo, then it comes under the ambit of trademark. On the other hand, if I talk about any functionality, for example, there is a piece of code which runs on Google for running the Google Maps. So that piece of code comes under the ambit of copyright, not the patent, but the functionality is a patent. What we used to have like? We used to have like, uh, we are entering the source, destination, the map is there, navigation, maps are there. So all the functionalities comes under the ambit of the patents. And if I talk about the design of the iPhone, so substantively rectangular curves are, their edges are curved. So that comes under the design patent applications. So these are the basically uh, various uh, kinds of IPs uh, which are very essential. And uh, if you see like uh, these are the various pointers. Generally like uh, the patents are valid for 20 years from the date of filing. In these 20 years nobody can uh, be use, sell, import, offer to sell, all are all things get excluded from the other parties. So patent life, during the patent life, you are very active. But at times what generally I encountered with that startups are going for the investment, they are attracting the investors, and investors are, the meeting is scheduled for the next week. They need to reveal their idea. Then at that time or any crucial time, go with the provisional patent at least. Provisional patent is not a mandate one, it, it, it shows basically it's a college degree that you file it, your idea is secured for the time being and government allows you after 12 months or within 12 months uh, span of time you need to file a complete application so your idea is also protected and investment is also on the not on the stage. So generally like I, I feel that startups generally commit certain mistakes which should be heavily avoided. The first thing I used to uh, there are like certain startups, what is the first step startup do, whatever the product they are making, whatever the service they are going to launch, they put every information on their website. This should be avoided strictly unless your idea gets patented. And why it is important? Because something which is in the public use or in the public information that bars you, in India that's a like clause that bars you to get the patent application on that. If that is prior to your date that was in the public disclosure. So avoid putting too much material, whichever is relevant, put that material only and once the patent is filed, go ahead with that. You have to be enough cautious, like at times with the devices or with services, it is important to file more than one IP also, maybe the copyright, maybe trademark, maybe patent, the combination. So I, appropriate IP strategy is very important. Otherwise, if you are touching one thing, you are losing the other end. So you have to complete package needs to be encapsulated in the IP filings. Try to avoid generally like uh, I used to uh, see in like last couple of months, people used to have like oral deals on IP. Try to avoid oral deals. Always you must have a written communication because for, for example, you are importing certain components or you are like uh, getting outsourced components. If that product is getting infringed, who is going to be liable? You or the party? Who has supplied you? So you have in your contract, in your clauses, you must check that who is going to be liable party. Because if you are, you have supplied to like n number of users and tomorrow if the infringement case occurs, then it is going to impact you badly. So general there is a like a perception, like almost like this, uh, Govind has already covered, uh, like uh, first you have to invent and evaluate. Evaluation phase is very important because you need to check like whether your patent is really novel because novelty criteria is very high. Novelty bar is very high in the patent office. So evaluate it, then drafting. What is drafting? You need to encapsulate your idea into the techno-legal jargons. The patent office accepts not only the technical, but rather they prefer to have the techno-legal wordings. So that is the drafting phase. If that is once it is filed, it will go for the prosecution. The patent office is going to raise certain objection based on the technical and the legal aspects. And that needs to be like uh, revert back to the patent office with the arguments. And if that goes fine, it could be granted. Otherwise, hearing and then 
depending on the what is the world rate. But the biggest problem which uh, startups are facing that uh, we filed the patent application in 2018, but it is not getting processed yet. So expedited examination, what is expedited examination? So certain countries, including India, yeah, this is, I think, startups can pay attention to because most often we complain of the timings that we are filing and it takes a lot of time. So there is, nowadays there is a possibility of expedite process. Means letting that process conclude in less tenure or less time. So timeline is getting shrinked, but it has some extra fee and all those implications. So I think this is very significant. Please touch on that with yeah. a bit more interest and detail. So two things I will be touching on the next two slides. One is the PCT. So what happens generally, once you file the patent application today, let's say January 1st, government allows you maximum of 12 months in which you need to choose the other country in which you want to route your patent application. Depending on the context, for example, you are dealing with a healthcare product, you are dealing with the electric vehicles, you are dealing with the crypto security. Then these are the search domains which are adaptable, which are quite accepted across the globe. Then there are like, if you wish to route that patent application to the other country, you have the window of only 12 months. You need to choose the countries. But at times it happens that 12 months is not sufficient. They are not adequate to choose the country. Then there is alternative route of foreign filing is you can take the PCT, Patent Cooperation Treaty, in which like you can sell, I guess, like more than uh, 160, 170 major countries, name any. They are under the ambit of this. You can file the PCT application. So now, instead of 12 months of window, you will get in certain countries 30 months, in certain countries 31 months, in which you need to take the call which countries are appropriate for you. That is the first way to enter into the foreign filings. The second way is like is quite sure that which countries are prominent for you, then it is highly, highly required that there are two possible routes. The first is like, Today you have filed in India, tomorrow you wish to enter into US. Then you have to take the license from the government. That is known as foreign filing license. Otherwise, you have to wait for six weeks and after that you don't need to have a foreign filing license and you can directly choose the country in which you want to enter. So PCT is a very beneficial tool if you want to extend your 12 months deadline. And uh, all the major countries are under the ambit, so I think that covers a lot. Whereas if you wish to expedite, that is like a uh, lot many patents and trademarks are getting delayed. So how to expedite that? So government of India allowed a female applicant, startups, MSMEs, and uh, there are certain PCT application designating India. These applicants can request to the patent office for filing the patent to, for expediting the patent application, and there is like certain timelines like in the, uh, the first patent goes to the controller, the examiner, although there are like certain timelines are there, at times it get varied also, but by filing the appropriate form, there is a form, form 18A for the expedite filing. So if you are a startup, the first thing you must possess the Startup India certificate and tip certificate, then probably you can go ahead with the filing of the as a startup. So there are like multiple ben benefits for you. First is the like you are expediting overall speed prosecution, hearing, etc, etc is getting uh, expedited and the other good part is for startups in comparison to general company, you are getting the government fees rebate of 80%. So this is very beneficial for you. On the same hand, if you talk about the trademarks, so trademarks are also allowed for the expedited examination. Although the fees is like quite high, generally uh, for trademarks, usual normal filing fees for the startup is 4500. But if you wish to go with the expedited examination, government charges 20,000 rupees extra. Uh, we filed certain trademarks and they got the grant even in less than a week also. So this is very good tool if you want to showcase, you want to launch, you want to have a conference, then probably you can go ahead with this. Otherwise, you can go with the normal routine. And for the patent filing, the government fees, instead of 8,000 rupees, government gives you 80% of rebate for the filing. That comes. 1600 rupees and you are getting the expedited stuff also. So this is very important if you want to expedite. Designs and copyright, they are like almost all by default on the expedited stage, so they are not uh, attracted towards the expedited examination. These are the like some very prominent uh, case laws because people used to think like what Govin mentioned that softwares are not predictable and something. So that, that is a complete myth. 
softwares are built into build. Be it be search engine, be it be crypto software, be it be encryption based methodology, all are uh, prominent for the patenting. And this is like very classical case of, this is 2023 case only Cisco. So Cisco was about to pay this 2.75 billion to sundry people. And there are like two types of damages, how this value comes in. So that is very important. So court says, like for example, you have X divide and then court decides damages based on multiple factors. How much that is prominent, how much it is the user based, what is the impact going to the mass and based on that and in United States the concept of willful infringement means I have sent you a notice that I have a patent and still you are infringing. Then the damages are multifold. So this was the like Cisco lost this battle, then Columbia University is there and like many more. So in this I want to like uh, give a like summarized look that softwares are very well patentable provided it has to be drafted very nicely and all the major companies you can name any like uh, IBM, Microsoft, uh, FI, Fortinet all are filing patents very actively. So primarily I touched upon the expedited filings as well as international filing. So open house in case you have any query or something I will be more than happy to answer please. Any questions and they can be raised, please. Yeah. So I wanted to ask a question in case of like the maps on that switch, right? There are a lot of uh, maps products, like right? Apple Maps, Google Maps, right? And if Google Maps has patented, then technically Apple Maps and these as they should not be in the business. And why are they in the business if it's already IP? So if I get you a question correctly, like uh, if that is, has been patented by Apple, then how Google is using? That's what your question is. Because the softwares are and functionalities are very same, right? So if the functionality is patented, then how can there, are, there is a competition? See, they are like... Uh, there for me there, right? Agreed. So that's like, I think, very relevant question for the audience. So I hope the question is like well absorbed by the people. There are like multiple ways. The first is like, probably if you have a very, very like... Uh, Bank on technology. Let's say I have a uh, touch screen technology. You see in ATMs also, you see in your phones also, laptops also. And uh, many more companies are making that. So the first possibility is like I have licensed out for a certain period of time. Like Nokia Ericsson was the deal. Microsoft Yahoo was the deal. So if I have licensed out, let's say I have licensed out like every year you are going to give me like let's say 100 CR. And whatever you want to do for five years of span. It is licensed out. So in five years of window, whatever you want to do, you can. That is the first way. Second way, when the patent is filed in Google Maps, it doesn't mean that all other parties are blocked for filing the maps. If you talk about the processor, so processor was first filed somewhere around in like I guess late uh, 60s or 70s. But if you see today's uh, date also, lot many companies, Qualcomm, ST Microelectronics, lot many companies are like uh, crypto processor. They are filing. How it is possible? When the processor was protected, it couldn't be. It means whenever you have certain things, there is an incremental research is done. So always next patent is focused on that incremental research. Incremental research what has been done rather than this part. So that's where the patent office sees where the novelty is, means where the incremental research is done. Yeah, that is why when we started the whole of the discussion, it was around you have to gear up, you have to be first or you have to be best. This is the basic means whole of the tussle. We invent, we research, we kick up, we gear up and we ensure we are first or we are best. There is something, some value addition, some means betterment to the value addition for the user experience. You create it, you get it. It's as simple as this. But never refrain from getting it. Now the question is, is my idea safe? I am working on that. I will come up with the process. I will come up with the technology. But what about my idea? I am having a very novel idea. I believe my research has given this, ign this ignition to me. Can I protect that? So this is what uh, I think Mr. Dushar was able to say in the beginning when he talked about that there is a process that we should understand. Rather than means getting scared of the long process and all, there is one process and one form that we call as provisional application of patent. So right away from idea, try and protect that. Keep on working, 
adding volume, and then complete whole of our sequence, and you will get the patent granted. There's one more question to ask to all of you. Whosoever feels like can just jump in and add value to that. If as a startup or as a researcher I'm filing a patent, and I have given it, it's not granted to me yet. Is my information safe? Is my innovation safe during that time? During the, after the filing? Yeah. Yes, once you have filed the patent application, it is with the government of India. After that, you can use that patent number for any purpose. For the investment purpose, for your marketing purpose, you can use it. Uh, I, uh, I think one thing also is that uh, it remains confidential for 18 months in a normal course. Right? So, I think a lot of times people have this you know, uh, problem that, you know, I will file tomorrow, everybody will see tomorrow. Right? So, I think that's also something to know that uh, it's not that you file today and it will be published tomorrow, unless you request the patent office to do so. Uh, so, it will remain confidential for 18 months, which is long enough period for you to build uh, your product, right? So I think that's also one of the you know major misconception that we have. Yeah, one of the hiccups when we feel like why to let my information go out unless and until I've just completely my means cooked my hand on. So uh, there is a tenure unless and until they publish it out, they keep it confidential. So we can like go ahead that my idea is also protected and once it is, it comes under the heading of the publication, it is available on website, it is available on journal. And people can also search your patent out. They know that, okay, till this research is done. Whether I'm adding value to not, uh, you can just check that through the patents. Yeah, so uh, this discuss, yeah, we have a couple of more significant questions that show some of the way the just, things just are Just a more follow-up question. So uh, you asked about the uh, novelty and the research, right? And, yeah. and 18, 18 months is a very, very long time for a startup. And a startup usually do multiple payments. So every time a startup pays, we have to file a new patent. Like, or the same application can be modified to accommodate the new, uh, new payment that the startup did. So I think that's a, again a very good question. Like, uh, every time we have to file a separate application during the 18 months, no. Once you file the patent application, if there is some clerical mistake, some typos are there, that is allowable by the patent office. Otherwise, you can't go beyond that. For example, if I talk about initially, I have. Uh, listed in the patent, I have articulated that this is going to be a wired communication, for example. And later on, I am going to say it, it could be the wireless also. Unless I have described there, I can't amend that. And there is a like concept known as unity of invention that one idea, one patent is allowed in, across the jurisdiction. So that is not allowed. That's the first thing. Second thing, uh, will it be advisable to get your patent published, or is it good to hide your patent from the mass? That depends on case to case. For example. If your patent gets published, usually these days government uh, by charging extra fees uh, from the startups uh, 2500, then government used to publish it in 4 to 8 weeks of time generally. So what is the advantage of getting it early published? If tomorrow litigation comes in and you are going to sue the any company, X company, then when the first time your patent was in the public disclosure, so date is shifted back. So you are getting the damages from that. And if your patent was not published, you are going to lose that money. And the drawback is like, as soon as you are going to disclose that, uh, maybe your competitors are almost on the brink of doing the same thing. They can tweak the idea and they can smart their product. So that depends on case to case. Uh, one thing I can also add in this is that uh, if the pivot is somewhere related, right? Uh, and you have filed a provisional or you know, otherwise, there is always this chance that you can add more within 12 months. But if the pivot is like 360 degrees and it's not even related to your original patent, then of course you need to file new. So I hope the questions are being perfect, huh? So we have one more question from the young lady out here. Yeah. Before, I guess, 2012 or 13, it was the concept of first to invent. 
But these days, most of the countries are on the first to file. So, for example, today I have filed a patent application and I have not expedited. And day after tomorrow, you have filed and you have expedited. The first thing is like your patent will be objected on the novelty criteria. That is the first thing. So, patent office is going to reject that. That is the first round. Second, if you have expedited the patent disturb, then it depends on uh, my patent is not under the examination or something. It is going in my place and your patent application, maybe you are going to receive the objections more sooner than me. So that's how the patent office works. So first to file, whoever is going to file, that is the party is going to take the credit. Yeah, so I think the process and the journeys is going on. And to this contribute to, let us listen from our researcher professor who is dealing closely with the research community, the researchers, and he is himself have got patents, has been associated with Vinak University and so many researchers under him who have got this process under him. So please over to you. So thank you very much. So Govind sir and uh, uh, like Tushar sir tell you uh, like all the legal aspect of the, but I will tell you from the researcher aspect because I am a professor, I know how to invent the things. So if I talk about this bottle, so is this bottle is patentable or not? Any, any, any answer? Patentable or not? This is patentable. Design of this bottle is patentable. So, what is the diameter of this? How the line are drawn over here? So, even you can you can make your own design. Even people from different part of our nation they are designing their own kind of inventions, but but they don't have idea how to how to like uh, get the patent of that. So that comes under the design patent. So anyone can go for the design patent, only we need to make some drawing, like sometimes we see some dolls. So dolls are designed by someone else. We cannot copy the same result without the permission of that. Similarly phone, this mic, this phone also, this, this like mic also, it has its own design. So this, we need to think in this aspect also because other researchers are things like that. So that's why, now the point is about the like uh, in Indian government providing facility for the attorney and for the individual also we can file the patent. That is very very important. I myself filed my patent. So this is uh, like uh, 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 very less in the cost and I can uh, like also learn how to do the co complete thing otherwise initially it was very tough to me. First I need to find some attorney. If, yeah, the man is providing very good facility. Attorneys are here you can get the contact and all the things. But initially if I talk about four or five years back so it was tough to me as an academician find them and like ask them what the, they, they what the need what how to do so uh, so it was tough but now i will tell you the detailing about the patent first of all we need four things in a patent first abstract like a research paper like any 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 article need so we need to write around 100 150 words for the abstract what basically we are going to invent in that if that is utility or invention patent. Second, we need to write some description, like detailing, complete detailing of that. What is that and how it is using? What are the steps in that? Third, we need to, if there is some design aspect, like some kind of uh, uh, proposed model, uh, I'm going to design some some like hard disease, hard disease detection system using deep learning, for example. So what the approach we are using? How like where it will go the input, where the output will come, what kind of deep, deep learning approach, which model of the deep learning approach, what the layers and this detailing I need to mention over here. In each step, first this, second this, fourth this, fifth this, in the design aspect. Finally, we need to, the important thing that is claim, what we are going to claim. At least four or five claim we need to mention at the end. So that is more than sufficient for the publication initially. Only two pages, three pages is more than sufficient for the publishing aspect. If we are going for the patenting, then we need to give more and more detailing while the queries will come. So this is all about it. And uh, Sarva's uh, remaining trademark, the trademark secrets, and like uh, uh, these things are already discussed. So any so query? One, one question, like Professor, like when we talk about researchers and also any, because it is said this whole session was for to facilitate out that aspect. Means what more do you think can be done so that the, they can easily adapt this, this process? Because many of researchers are doing research, but they are not getting the research patented out. For example, I just give an example. Uh, uh, we just uh, we was working in, in a real time project, heart disease protection system, you uh, like uh, uh, prediction system using IoT kind of devices. So we just installed some devices in the hospitals. We get the data, 
and then we finally after this as computing try computing we applied and then we finally decide whether the the data coming is related to uh, some kind of heart disease or not so now we need to think two thing here whatever we are our invention is is then better than state of heart or not if that already exists somewhere so we cannot claim that anywhere do we are using some other kind of microcontroller some some other kind of algorithm for yeah. that so very rightly sir i think if you're looking in the paucity of time so i would just like to uh, thank you for this whole elaboration and the concept brought for the but definitely what professor wants to bring out is the concept and the quotient of innovation we always have to be cautious of that because this is only giving us a edge and a possibility that whatever we are filing would be agreed on without much of the objections so thank you so much thank professor you can please come and have a seat and with us we do have one startup as startups are means concerned so please we have already with us mr dalip and they are having patent filed being a startup filing a patent coming to have its value judged and what was the process and how you feel the startups can relate to that and some advices on that part so please now this is yeah. to you Thank quickly you, quickly if we yeah, can sir. just come up with those things that they can benefit on through this journey sure sure so i think uh, we are a startup uh, uh, kolkata labs in the quantum security area and it's a niche field so what are this niche uh, security itself is niche right so uh, i think we will try so so the way at least we try to approach right one if it is a pit if it is a if it's an idea if it's a pure idea for example right i have not implemented because see in this space uh, speed is very important and if it is an idea even if i have not implemented i will go ahead and file it right because ideas can also be patented it is not necessary that you implement it and show it and then patent so if it's an idea for sure i will go and file it file a patent if let's say i have implemented something right then at times i will file a patent at times i will not file a patent yeah. so if you look at it especially in the competitive uh, domain right the moment you file a patent and the information is known uh, somebody can actually use it as a base to be kept to be a part of it to be a part of it and then come with a competitive product so then typically what we do is that we don't file a patent for that we basically keep it as a trade secret Right, till for for a time till I think uh, the competition is not there. But more and most importantly, we as a startup we are also valued based on number of patents we have filed. Right. So for example, we we used to claim earlier that we have filed let's say five patents, then we got some. Now we claim that we have filed fifteen patents. Right. So this number actually somehow correlates that okay, this startup is doing really great work. Right. So this number is very very critical. so what we we'll do as a startup is that at times we will file a patent but we will we'll file it in a way and give as much information so that it is bit generic and and doesn't let's say uh, uh, tell everything about it also by keeping it generic what we do is that we also take care of any small variations that somebody else will try to do so we so that's a that's a very fine thing working that we have to do right now Another thing is that at least what I learned at least in Kuru Labs is that see patents need not be necessarily for very big things. Right? So it is not that if I invent something entirely new, we'll file a patent. Most of the patents, in my understanding, and Gobind also can correct it. At I think around 80% patents are let's say variations of existing patents. Right? So let's say if you, for example, if I take this map example, right? let's say if i say okay from uh, i have a functionality to go from here to here and i take this user input right there could be another patent where i say i will go from here to here and probably also take or take two inputs right i'm just trying to simplify it right but i can do it like that and then say this is my patent so if you if you look at it for example in your uh, tv screen right the fast forward and the reverse buttons are actually also patent they are so stupid things are so simple right so the way we actually trying to do now and that's how we are actually also increasing the number of patents that we, so we basically also file a patent and then we file a variation of the patent and when we get an idea that this patent probably can have another variation we file for that as well so so basically uh, we need not wait for something big to happen we need not wait for something to get implemented right 
So we have to be very careful of that because not just the core patent on variations also we should keep it. So that's that's how that's what we have been trying to do. Now if you if you also look at it right uh, from an Indian perspective, right? From Indian perspective, startup perspective. For example, when I go and sit with the team, right, and we say, okay, is there any good work or any new work you have done, let's say, in the last last uh, three months or six months, right? Then people will just say, no, no, we have done some normal implementation, right? That's a very standard thing, right? Uh, it's all normal, uh, every, uh, it's there everywhere. But that is where I think uh, at times uh, we seek help from professionals. But that is a time when we say, okay, no, there has to be something, right? When let's say 15, 20 people are working together and, and basically uh, you have done something and you are a startup, there has to be something different, right? So then typically this is an ideation phase or this is basically extracting ideas for patent from whatever work you have already done, right? So at least what I have seen is that uh, if you do it professionally, even let's say with some routine normal work, you'll be able to find 10 to 15 ideas, you start writing about it and the core, at core thing is that how do you articulate a difference, right? How do you articulate? So that is something where at times you need brainstorming, we can do it yourself or at times let's say some of the companies, uh, they actually help you do that articulation for you. Yeah, very true. So, so this is something I think which has helped us. So I think we have filed <coughs> almost 15 patents, probably more than more in pipeline. And happy to interact and help you over there. No, some of the nuances, as um, the link could point out, like uh, we should not wait. Like idea should be the start point to go ahead with. And if you are coming up with some var var variations or adding value to the existing work, get it patented out so that you are keeping your work intact. So I think. Um, for this session, we have come to have, the session is all about getting closer to the process, getting to know it more, coming up with some of the hiccups means overturned so that you may feel more comfortable with the process to have stimulation created among you people so that now you won't sit, you will feel this is my area, I should go and get it done. So thank you all for being a patient audience and thank you so much for the speakers. Uh, at National Center of Excellence, we do several efforts in this regard and I would request Director of National Center of Excellence, Mr. Vineet Madan, also to please come and share some words. So I don't have any words to offer beyond what you guys have well, I have a query if you could address that. So why do you find the startups find their patent in India? How does it protect uh, their intellectual property in terms of that somebody from outside India may not copy? So therefore, what is the best approach to secure your ideas in an innovation globally? If you could just comment on that. I, I think uh, one thing that uh, we need to know that IP is mostly territorial. Right? So uh, whatever uh, we file in India stays protected in India. If we have to have uh, protection in US and Europe and other countries, then we have to go and individually file in these countries. Of course, you know one mechanism is the PCT, which Tushar talked about, is to extend the time. But see, typically in the patent realm, I can tell you that if you are covered in India, US, Europe, possibly Japan, you are basically done. Can you can you tell touch upon certain schemes of government of India, yeah. which can help start up uh, absorb the cost of patent filing Absolutely. across uh, within India and outside India? Sure. So there are many schemes. In fact, uh, one scheme, uh, a lot of startup uh, like startup uh, Kerala has, startup Tamil Nadu has, startup Karnataka has, I think uh, Gujarat as well. A lot of these startup communities. Uh, you know these startup missions of these states give two lakh rupees as a reimbursement for local domestic partners, and then up to ten lakh rupees for you know for the international partners. Uh, of course, uh, given that it's a reimbursement, so of course it takes a while. But there are schemes you can actually avail. Uh, there are some startup facilitator schemes and all that, but then again, it's it sometimes becomes very difficult. Uh, you know, for for of course volume it is fine, but for very serious work. Sometimes it gets too short of money. Yeah, it's a mostly demographic. Uh, if you are registered in Gujarat or Kerala, I, I think almost every state uh, startup mission has this. I have met people in these states who have taken advantage, so that's why I'm only counting those. I'm sure every state has. I'm sure uh, you can also help. You know, with DSA, I can also interact with these startup missions and create a sort of you know. Uh, this kind of uh, process for all our you know, DSCI participants. So is there any particular state uh, under, the, under the jurisdiction of Patent Office of India which facilitates in expediting or, or smooth 
for the smoothing the process of filing the patents. So as such, there are four patent offices in India. I mean, depending on where you are located, you will get selected in those patent offices. As such, patent office expedite is like a queue, right? So there is a queue. You pay for it. You are in the queue. They will take your case. So that's how it works. I mean, as such, they are only say patent office itself is saying that look. We are offering you discount, 80% as a startup. We are offering you an opportunity to have your patent uh, get it examined quickly. Beyond that, of course, there are schemes available outside, and then yeah. So to take the away the discount, the startups are expected to be registered with DPIIT. Yes, yes. For that, it has to be the DPIIT is mandatory to have that certificate to prove that you are a startup investor. Uh, so DPIIT is mandatory. So anyway, I don't know. So all those who are startups sitting here, but. Uh, at National COE, we may consider, I mean, this, this idea comes to me right now that in case any one of you is attempting to file a patent, please reach out to us. We will consider, I am not committing it right now, but we will consider if we can assist you any way which will financially to file the patent. So we will consider that. So, see, at National CA, we already saw all the startups who are accelerated by us. We already provisioned them uh, some kind of a legal support as well. So, we have uh, that kind of assistance that we wish to provide, or we have been already been providing to startups. We have been vetting their legal drafts, we have been facilitating them, uh, frame up their legal drafts as well. So, if you have some particular requirement, we will be happy to take that on board. Uh, depending on the number of startups that come, then we will po possibly organize the thing around it to uh, support and accelerate our startup. That's what our mandate and purpose of existence is. So, we will be more than happy to do that. I will now hand over to the session moderator for this session. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I must say that this has been, this kind of programs, we at National Center of Excellence has a mandate to help on one hand our startups, on the other hand our researchers to go and make their journey as smooth as is possible. So whatever hiccups are there, we try from our side, bridge them up. It means more warmly to help you people out and bridge those gaps out. This session was one little small step towards that. I think more impetus towards this is required and we will continue to conduct these kind of sessions more for you people out. And looking forward for your more overwhelming participation. And with this faith that we'll be now more awakened about this, we'll be more on our toes towards this, and we have our intellectual property keep intact, safe to have. You people are working in the cyber security field, creating cyber security preparedness and safe user experience for others. But I think at the same moment, it is very important that you keep your intellectual property safe. So, with this hope, Wrapping the session out, Dr. Sarabjit Kaur, Associate Director of Research, National Center of Excellence, along with my director, Colonel Vanit Madan. A small effort, but I hope you would appreciate this. At the same moment, I would like to thank you, my speakers, who have given the best to contribute towards us. A big round of applause, not only for speakers, but for my audience too. Thank you so much, generously. Thank you so much for active participation, for warmth, and for patience listening. Thank you all, once again. Yeah, thank you, speakers. Very adapted. Yes. A group photo. Sir, sorry.